everything is its essence. Everything is not its appearance. Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. First and foremost, welcome to all new subscribers and uh, people who watch the videos. This channel is growing and it's wonderful to be a part of. This channel operates from the main insight that appearance is not the same as essence. If we can make a clear demarcation line between everything that belongs to the appearance, meaning the physical appearance, thoughts, emotions, lower vital impulses, and even the entire personality, and then we go on to disidentify from everything that belongs to the appearance, this means that we can move our core identification from the appearance and into essence. And in essence, everything is more simple. A good way of describing it is the following statement. Everything is its essence. Everything is not its appearance. So let's examine that statement closer. A couple of years ago, I was sitting on the sofa here, or the one we had before, one evening listening to music. I had found stillness in my being. I had become quite still. But there was still some mental activity going on in the being. And the mental activity wanted to put labels on the music. So the first label it wanted to put on the music was to say that mm, this music is happy. But then it followed, then there was a recognition afterwards mm, that doesn't really fit at all. Then the mentalization tried to put another label on and said the music is spiritual. But then there was a recognition. No, not really. It, that doesn't really fit. And then it, the mentalization tried once again to say, maybe the music is ethereal. And then the recognition came, no, not really. The mu that doesn't really fit it either. It felt like none of the labels I wanted to put on the music wanted to stay on the music and they couldn't really stick to it and they fell off. All of a sudden, I got it. There was a knowingness which descended from above the crown. And it said, in a wordless way, the music is not anything. The music is. I got it. Finally, I got it. The music is exactly as it is in its essence, because it exists in its essence. Everything else than this essential, foundational existence is something that the appearance adds on to the essence. The appearance can put its physical expectations, its emotional rhythms and impulses, its thought systems and belief systems on top of the music. And as soon as the appearance have automatically done this labeling and mentalization, then it's not about what the music actually is. Then it becomes about what the appearance is. And the appearance can be many different things. Afterwards, I saw the music as being suspended in emptiness, like rain on a transparent and clear window. Everything is exactly as it is. And the more still we can get in ourselves, the closer we can get to what it actually is, instead of being about who we think we are. 
So let's go into it a bit more in this video. In section one, the gap between appearance and essence. As stated before, this channel, this YouTube channel operates from the main insight that appearance is not the same as essence. And the reason why it's so important to demarcate the line and place everything that belongs to the appearance on the appearance side and then leave the rest for the essence is because the appearance has a way of sabotaging the inherent flow of life. The deeper we are in our unconscious karmic patterns in our appearance, the further away we are from how everything actually is. We live, so to speak, in a bubble of our own appearance and everything we see in the bubble is a reflection or a projection of what the appearance thinks it is. And we feel isolated from the world and everyone around us. Luckily, the essence is only one 0.1 millimeter on the other side of our appearance bubble. So it's not as far away as it sometimes can feel. So what's missing here is the ability to see that appearance is not the same as essence in order to see oneself and the world. Thereby we have to start the spiritual work of building the bridge that, that, that takes us from appearance to essence and closes the gap. Because in this gap between appearance and essence, sociopathic individuals can exploit the inherent lack of truthfulness in the appearance. The, the appearance can never know truth in itself. And in that way, you can exploit the naivety of the appearance and you can get a lot of power and a lot of money. We simply have to step out of the appearance, even if only for a short while, because the appearance can never know love. Humanity is in an awkward position between the unconscious instinctive domain of the animals and the full ever-presentness of divine consciousness. In the animal instinctive world, there is no gap between appearance and essence. For instance, a horse never doubts that it is a horse because a horse has not developed an understanding of being a separate horse individual which has become separated from its tribe. In the horse's own subjective reality, it's just a part of the hive mind of the unconscious domain of, uh, of the horse world, so to speak. And because a horse never worries about being a horse, it is simultaneously very good at being a horse When I observe it, it, it moves beautifully. It never, it, it's, it's just living out its potential spontaneously without any worry of, or doubt in its mind. But hu human beings are not like the animals. We have acquired an understanding of being humans and being separate individuals. And therefore, in a very paradoxical way, this understanding of being humans can paradoxically make us bad at being human beings. In other words, there's an, there have been added a layer of abstraction on top of our existence, which is not present in the animal kingdom. This layer of abstraction can oftentimes feel as a loss of innocence when growing up out of childhood as talked about in the, in the video last week. And so we long to return to the unconscious 
instinctive domain. But what we are longing for is not to return to childhood, the childhood's unconsciousness. What we long to do is go further from the appearance and into the essence. So to sum up, if we can stomach this uncomfortable abstraction layer of the appearance as a temporary passage through consciousness, if you can train ourselves and become better at standing in ourselves and own ourselves by finishing our self-narrative, heal our wounds, and balance our polarities, then we are on our way out of the uncomfortableness of the appearance. It is the uncomfortableness by the self-conscious appearance layer that makes us go and seek all these thoughts and belief systems in religion and wherever you can find them in order to relieve this burden of being a separate appearance individual. But the price is that these systems of thought and beliefs, they close around us and creates our bubble of appearance and hinders any further progress in our consciousness development. Section two, two forms of Andre and what about forgiveness? If we look at this chair over here, <clears throat> then we can see that in this chair, Andre is sitting. And Andre here consists of thoughts, emotions, lower vital impulses, and even his entire personality. Andre additionally has some specific roles, such as a father of children, psychotherapist, spiritual teacher. Andre has an age, he has a citizen's registry registration number, and he's in the process of getting a new passport. Andre's entire personality has been built up as a compensation and avoidance, so as not to feel the motion of being vulnerable. What Andre fears the most is to be put in a situation where other people have the power over him to either run away invade him, cheat him, or, to sum up, to betray him. Andre, therefore, will spend his entire life trying to avoid that from happening. In order to strengthen and magnify Andre's personality, he can take in thoughts and belief systems, for instance, about it's about being the strongest of the pack and so on. And from there he can look down on other people in which he deems as not being strong enough in order to survive. In that way, Andre, who is sitting in this chair, becomes better than everyone else and will temporarily feel a form of satisfaction and importance in his life. This seeking after protection creates the bubble around Andre and in a paradoxical way gets him to feel even more vulnerable and more frightened and alone in the world in an attempt to get rid of these emotions. And furthermore, Andre's compensatory bubble here in his appearance attracts situation in which the worst nightmare of Andre's personality comes to fruition, where he ends up feeling vulnerable and alone and hurt. And now I want to talk about how one of these nightmares came to fruition a little over two years ago. Andre has spent five years finishing his psychotherapist studies. And at the end, he, he had to go to the exam. 
at the exam, Andre's worst fear came to fruition. Andre came in to an examinator and a censor, and they both were not able to wake up from their own appearance. The examinator had an invasive and attacking appearance, a little bit like Andre also has, and was therefore much, much better than Andre. And it was about, from then on, it was about finding all the faults of Andre and attacking them. The examinator knew best. The censor, on the other hand, had a more defensive appearance. The censor had erected high walls in its inner castle, and from within the safety of the castle could catapult heavy rocks over the walls of the castle and hope that one of them would hit Andre and neutralize him. Andre that sits in this chair, in other words, got his rear handed to him in the exam. And subsequently, he was also betrayed because the authorities, namely the examinator and the censor, had fallen asleep to the fact that they had all the power and, would, and had the power to set the boundaries of how the good exam was supposed to progress. Lastly, Andre got a very bad grade as a kind of shame. <laughs> uh, yeah, the opposite of approval, uh, a shame, uh, yeah, and, uh, and could go out of the door. But at the very, at the dying minutes of the exam, uh, the examiner changed the style from the invasive attacking and now wanted to save the whole uh, ordeal at the last minute. But at that time, the door out had opened. The exam was over. And Aunt Andre, who was sitting in the chair, could, um, could walk out of the door as a beat down and sh shamed but free human being. Afterwards, Andre went uh, through Copenhagen uh, crying and bleeding in the energetic sense and sat down in the chair at his own therapist and cried it out and was met by the therapist in all of it. And from there, healing could start. After the exam, Andre had an a reaction to the whole experience. He felt shame. He had a white glowing rage. He felt extremely unfairly treated. He didn't feel good enough. He felt cheated and betrayed. There was a double betrayal here. One thing was the exam in it of itself, but the institution behind it, which legitimizes this way of practicing the exam, by being blind towards their, um, the people who work there and their essence levels. The suffering was extreme. Andre knew that the road from appearance to essence would be long and require a lot of inner work. Luckily, Andre had already gone this way before, once before in his life, so he knew the way, he knew that it was possible to go from appearance to essence. So the question remained, how do you forgive ignorance of the appearance and get back to the essence? Andre, who's sitting in this chair, can never get out of his foundational insecurity. He will never become satisfied and content. He can never step into love. The work here instead is to finish up building Andre, get the shame out of his system, rebalance his energy system, heal his wounds, etc., etc., 
and finally realize that appearance is not the same as essence. As talked about in the last video about nostalgia and childhood, the appearance loves pain and suffering. When you have been through difficult situations in your life, and we all have, you have to be incredibly awake and catch how the appearance wants to hijack this situation and experience for its own benefit. The appearance, so to speak, kidnaps forgiveness and uses it and, use, and can use it in the three following ways. From the anger paradigm, a polarity exists. The polarity between the appearance saying, I forgive you, or alternatively, the appearance saying, I will not forgive you. These two sentences is at the different end of the spectrum, and but they are both in the anger paradigm, because it's the appearance that thinks that it has the power to forgive anyone, which is an absurd belief. The third option here is the appearance from the pride paradigm, recontextualizing forgiveness and saying something like, thank you so much universe for sending all down all this suffering to me so I can handle it and grow. Thereby the appearance captures forgiveness, or we can also call it the spiritualized ego, and feels special or even noble in its superior way of handling and going through its suffering. But we have not come to this earth to suffer. We are the divine children and all that. So forgiveness now in quotation marks happens automatically when one removes his core identification from the appearance and into the essence. Instead of forgiving as an active uh, action, we see in, in the essence that there really is nothing to forgive. That each and every one of us are perfect in our essence. And in the shift to essence, we don't really forgive, but instead of forgiving, we choose to step out of suffering. When we choose to step out of suffering, what happens is, in the, in the energetic sense, we stop adding our energy to the suffering. And sooner or later, this suffering will collapse on its own. Now we return here to the chair with the appearance of Andre sitting in it. And after having explored this, we can see that I, I have this Andre over here, but I am not this Andre over here. I am this Andre over here. Hello. So in other words, it's the gap between the essence and the appearance, between how the appearance think the world is and how the world actually is that creates the friction of, that leads to suffering. It is this gap that, that makes the appearance have a, have a feeling of never really standing on solid ground. It is the gap between appearance and essence that makes the appearance go into its own bubble of belief systems and thought systems in an attempt to take care of itself and secure its own survival. It is the gap between appearance and essence that is responsible for us human beings always hurting each other in the human world. That Andre's appearance has to fight all the other appearance in order to win in the game of life. But life is not a game. And from the essence, it becomes clear that everything just is as it is. The sun did say, 
forgive them for they know what not what they do in my vocabulary i would say forgiveness happen forgiveness happens by itself as a consequence of bridging the gap between appearance and essence and moving one's core identification from the appearance and into the essence because from the essential uh, perspective of essence i don't see shame but lack of connection from the essential perspective in essence i don't see rage but compassion from the essential perspective in essence i don't see unfairness but karmic perfection from the essential perspective of essence i don't see cheating but automatic unconscious karmic patterns from the essential perspective of essence i don't see betrayal but identification with appearance instead of essence from the essential perspective i am standing at the top of the mountain in the clear air and i can see the storm raging in the valley below me and sooner or later the storm will blow over and the only thing that will be left is clarity Three. Everyone always tells you where they are in their essence. In the essence, everything is exactly as it is. Because the appearance, and in the appearance, everything is not exactly as it is. Because the appearance puts and adds on all these layers in of illusion on top of what is. This means that when we realize that appearance is not the same as essence we can simultaneously see where everyone else is but it requires us to be very awake people don't go around carrying a name tag which says something like hi my name is robert and when i'm a, and i'm in the prior paradigm but it's quite close to that because the appearance always wants to tell a story about itself that it's either better or worse than it actually is everything called politics marketing commercials spiritual marketplace news social media is the the appear the playground of the appearance in order to tell a story about itself which in itself has concocted it is the appearance land and it is the appearance rules and the, the the land of appearance is the way that we administer life on earth in its current manifestation so yes we are not in the unconscious animal domain anymore but we still have a lot of potential ahead of us you don't get peace and love by letting the appearance automatically tell us stories about itself you get peace and love by realizing that the appearance is not the same as essence and moving one's core identification from the appearance and into the essence out of the painful uncomfortable self-consciousness of the appearance luckily everything is always present the essential truth is more subtle than the narrative of the of the appearance mind and you have to be very aware to catch it but it is there the appearance of the examiner had had before the exam spent a lot of time trying to convince me and push me in a certain direction but i had caught the essential clues behind the bra bravado of the appearance my essence knew what was going to happen in the exam the world is not unfair the world is in its essence karmically perfect because everything is its essence and everything is not its appearance and now i will take a four week long summer holiday break and uh, every week there will be a youtube short video added onto my page so so as things are still rolling but i will be far away from the reach of the appearance have a wonderful summer